Hey guys and gals, Pat over here at Felsmere Outdoor Adventures, your Felsmere Fishing Headquarters. Over here with my partner Mike, Captain Mike, Captain Steve, and a very special guest, man. This guy is, this is Captain Ricky, and uh, he's with Black Cloud Fishing Charters. Um, guys, I, I can't say enough good stuff about Captain Ricky, man. He's been coming here for since we opened, mm -hmm. very supportive of the shop, um, top-notch guy, probably one of the best ones on the water for sure. Um, his clients come here all the time and, and they, they shop and, and they're just they're, they're ecstatic about the you know the experience that they have fishing with him I know for a fact uh, because I've known him for quite some time that, that he's and he has fished on a pro level uh, and we're, we're really really grateful that he's taken the time to come and and, and share with us and you guys uh, what he's been doing on the lake he's on the water every day um, so uh, he's part of our fishing report today and we're, we're, we're really blessed um, a couple things going on at the shop. We've got the the big Toys for Tots uh, benefit tournament coming up. Um, this is a really big deal, guys. If you're not doing anything on December 11th, uh, come on out here and, and let's support these Toys for Tots. It's a big deal. Miss um, Star, you know she she runs the whole deal here in Indian River County. Uh, it's amazing. She came up with some numbers from last year. It was over 9,000 uh, families that 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 benefited from from uh, you know what we par partook in tons of toys we had here at the shop the whole shop was full of toys they came and picked them up and they all actually went to children that would, would have never had a, a Christmas and that was all because of you guys man and wow. that's huge man I mean I'm getting goosebumps right now just thinking about it and so and God bless Miss Star I mean she's an incredible woman so we've got the boxes here at the shop now so bring by some toys for these for these these kids that, that, that are gonna have a Christmas because of us um, uh, the tournament is December 11th. The entry fee is $80. It's a team, or you can fish by yourself. It's up to you. There's a $20 big bass optional, and including in the entry fee is uh, bring an unwrapped gift for a child. Um, so that's a big deal right now that we've got going on. Uh, really excited about it. There's another drop box at Willie's Bar and Grill, one of our sponsors here in town in Felsmere. Um, shout out to Adam and, and, and Katie and, and the folks over there. I mean, the place is incredible. The food is great. The beer is cold. Uh, great atmosphere, great people. So, Willie's Bar and Grill here in town. Um, anyway, back to this fishing report. Uh, Mike, do you have anything else to add about anything? Uh, no, uh, I, I think we, we, we covered it. The Toys for Tots is definitely a big deal. Um, and uh, of course, we have the Trooper Star here. Uh, Captain Steve with us, uh, as always, from uh, Florida Big Bass Adventures. Too much, my Of course, you can book him directly to the shop here. Um, but uh, yeah, guys, let's get into the fishing report, man. What's, uh, yeah. what's happening? Well, today's been a heck of a day. I know, I know that you were doing artificial today. Mm -hmm. uh, you got an artificial trip. Uh, I had a China trip today, which was great. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so we're going to share a little bit of both. But uh, you know, the Shiner bite was on today. Uh, I didn't run across him the lake or anything like that, but the Shiner bite was really, really on. We caught numbers of fish. We caught about 69 total. Uh, our biggest, you know, six maybe just a little bit over six pounds. But we had a lot of some sixes, some fives, some fours. Uh, you know, three key areas. I mean, within a hundred yards, uh, we were on the trolling motor all day. You know, you know, spot locked it down in three spots, and that's what we thought our fish. Yeah, nice. Didn't even have to go that far. <clears throat> but you know, in regards to you know the place, you know, when we get to the map, we'll talk about that. But I mean, it's a really short ride. Uh, did you go up the canal a little bit further? Was there any more blockage or anything new? No, I mean, it's the same, um, but you can, it's easy access. I mean, when you run the main canal, that first cut through on your right hand side, on the west hand side, you can go through there and navigate all throughout the lake. It is still choked out mid lake, but like I said, that first cut through, you can have access anywhere throughout the lake once you get through that first cut. There is even a cut on the left side, which is on the east side of the lake. You can cut through on that side and have all access to the east side and the west side. So as far as uh, navigating the lake right now, it's fine even with that blockage mid-lake in the center of the canal. It's easily navigable on both sides um, to get around that. So no issues at all. Lake is in good shape. So we were talking about the gizzard shed and mm -hmm. how big they are and how many they are. I mean, there's so many. I mean, them. you know, today, was a, a tougher bite for me artificially, but I mean, our biggest went four pounds. Um, we kind of junk fished around. 
Uh, we fished a lot of the areas that I've been seeing of those big gizzard shad schools. And dude, I was telling Steve uh, last week, we caught a 917 and when we boated her, I mean, she had a big 12 inch gizzard shad <laughs> stuck in her throat. So, I mean, and I see them on my live, I see these shad schools and I'm literally watching these fish just blow up into these gizzard shad schools wow. on my live, on my home and bird live. So, I mean, yeah, man, they're gorging on bait, gorging so on shad. So when we want to match the hatch, I mean, what are you throwing? What? I mean, I, yeah, Pat, I mean, I've been mimicking, you know, that, those shad with uh, big glide baits, uh, shad pattern uh, glide baits. Um, I've been throwing a spinner bait. I've been throwing uh, big boot tail swim baits as well, wow. really to just mimic those bigger shad that these these big ones seem to be really focused on. And and again, I mean, even even those fours and three pound range, I mean, they're they're all through there, mixed in with those big fish. So uh, wow. nice. yeah, I mean, <clears throat> just trying to keep those in our hands, those big baits to really target those big ones is, is definitely key for me. You know, right. and what I've been trying to push to get a big bite. And in the last couple of weeks, you know, stick marsh has been fishing crazy. Yeah. Like, I mean, people. <laughs> Stupid crazy. There'll be 10 to 15 boats, like, within, I mean, outside of each other. I mean, we're talking back and forth, and everybody's just ripping yeah. on fish one after another. That's insane. And, you know, you know, 150 in this boat, 200 in this boat. <laughs> Tyler had what? Two, like, I 300, think almost 300, 300 and change. He had three guys on the boat with himself, but I mean, th yeah. over 300 fish. Yeah, I mean, Impressive. all in the same basin down there, you know? So it's impressive. just crazy. Yeah, so when, moving water. yeah and, and when we, you know, and that's what we've been telling everybody because everybody comes in, they want to catch fish. Yeah. I can guarantee, we can guarantee you fish go right down to the spillway, but it gets crowded down there and some right. people don't want to deal with that. So the good news is, um, Adam, um, uh, not Adam, uh, Alan and, and his brother went out the other day and went up to uh, the north end and fished that back lot. So, uh, the, and we'll, when we go to the map, I'll show you guys. Um, there's a lot of fish in that back lot as well yeah. on that ledge and on that flat in that eelgrass. Especially coming into the season. Yeah, they caught 66. The yeah. And so they didn't have to deal with the crowds down there, mm -hmm. even though the water's not, well, the, I, I, the water's not running yet because they're not releasing the water, mm -hmm. I don't believe. So, but they were still stacked up in there. It's a great spawning area, and that's that's a good time to start getting acclimated with that area yeah. because yes. we got the spawn coming up. So, yes. yeah, and that's a big deal. And all these lakes are so high right now; they got to start moving some water and yes. releasing some water. Yeah, yeah. 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 And Mike, how did you go on Garcia today? Well, I, I said Garcia water was super high, um, so the highest I've I've seen it in uh, quite some time. And I, I gotta be honest, it was a little bit of a struggle. Artificial, had an artificial trip, so we weren't using any live bait or anything. Um, but uh, the bite, bite was tough, uh, mainly an RSB uh, bass assassin worm, and that, that purple uh, seem, seemed to uh, trigger the, the most bites anyway. Um, but uh, the water was, was clean, looked good. Um, you know, grass and everything looks great, but uh, the artificial pipe was was a little off there today. Yeah, yeah. It, it's a little bit off filter right now, and I think once everything stabilizes, the water goes down, everything yeah. stabilizes, um, you know, and then the winter kind of sets in a little bit. It's going to mm -hmm. set these fish up where we're used to seeing. Yeah, right. And right. We're, and and the folks that come in from out of town, they see, you know, the, these high ridges to the lakes and so on. Right. Anybody from anywhere knows mm -hmm. that, you know, if they come down here in the winter time, these fish pull up. Yep. You know, the spawn and whatnot, and, right. and even the bucks too. Yeah. So they're gonna fish these places. You, you're gonna be able to catch fish. It's just, yeah. it's just, you know, the weather's been a little quirky lately. Yeah. 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 And and the water's not gonna stay up. They, uh, hopefully, it doesn't stay up. But they've got to release a lot of this water because yeah. with the spawn coming up, we we need shallow waters, right, yeah. guys? Yes. So, Absolutely. Yeah, that's important. Shallow yeah. water, hard bottom. Yeah. You know, um, you know, headwaters with catch up lumps and stuff like that. Those are right. Most of those are mine. Yeah, you know, I mean, for sure. I mean, I'm sorry, every fish we've been catching, you know, from the two pound range to the, even the bigger giants, I mean, they're fat and healthy. They I mean, they're up. slump. I mean, so they're feeding, they're getting ready for the spawn and for this cooler weather. Like Steve said, I mean, this weather's been a little all over the place. Today was high pressure. I mean, we had a good wind. I was really yeah. happy about the wind um, because it did push a lot of that bait up against those hard hydrilla lines and um, you know we were fishing on the outside and punching the grass 
Um, but it's definitely, I mean, it's gearing up to go off, man. Uh, I'm, yeah. I'm like any chomping day. at the bit any day right any now. Day right Those now. big girls are going to be chewing. And we've had flurries. I mean, we've had big fish eat, you know, especially mm -hmm. post storm, uh, post Nicole. Um, so it's, it's really just the, the conditions that, that given day, but, um, you know, even though we say a slow day, I mean, a slow day to us, right. <laughs> and, right. you know, uh, right. it's, it's normal still normal. a good day, you know, right. um, you know, I think our, 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 uh, pedestal is a lot higher, you know, just because yeah. what we see and what this lake, right. when it is on, what it produces, you know, so, um, right. a slower day is, is still a good day. Of I course, think. for sure. Of course. And uh, outside of the lake, what about the road? Uh, some guys have been complaining about the dirt road. Oh. I know they've been staying on it as far as grading it. They have, yeah. But with the Thanksgiving deal, uh, I know a lot of the guys had off, so a few days that didn't get graded. Mm. What did it look like today? It looked great. I mean, uh, when I drove, um, you could tell they put fresh dirt down, um, and they graded it. Um, and the FWC has been there on a regular. I mean, I, there's really not a day that I don't see them there in the parking lot. Right. It's well. been usually Mondays and Thursdays that are grading. When they're grading it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like Mondays and Thursdays usually. Right. But yeah, it's not washboard. Um, they've been definitely keeping up with it. So, um, and, you know, trail on your marriage, uh, your boat trail. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. man. Yeah. That's it. Is. For sure. <laughs> well, the good news is this time we're going to go to the maps, guys. We, we, worked, we didn't do it last time. We didn't want to drag the video out. So, um, why, don't we, uh, why don't we go to the maps and the guys will show you what they're doing and where they're catching them. And, and uh, guys, please just include uh, what, you know, what you've been using. You know what, what baits you've been using, sure. and what you think these guys should be using uh, with the with the days upcoming. Okay. Good. Can we start? Can we go first? Go ahead. You go first. Okay, so I'm gonna go with Stick Marsh. I had a trip, you know, a couple trips here in the last week or so. Uh, the water is moving. The water was moving here, here at the pump station, here at the boat ramp, of course. Um, the water was moving here for a couple three days that I found and really caught them here. Square bill crankbait, two point five. I even went to a 4.0 square bill crankbait uh, and they will chew it off the shell beds. Shell beds are about 50, 75 yards off of this pump. Uh, back here at the Q Canal back here, this is where everybody's been loading up and uh, watching and talking and enjoying each other's company while everybody's racking up, racking up the fish. It's <laughs> pretty wild. Um, the back lot that uh, Pat was talking about is here's the boat ramp. You come around the back side. This is the back lot. So where you see this dotted line right here, this is the deeper water on this side right here. All this over here on this side is the flat. As the winter goes, as, it, as we get into it, a lot of these big females will slide up here on this flat and they will spawn. You can find beds in this eelgrass. If you just take your time, move around, when the time is right, I'm guessing, you know, December, January, February. That's your times that you want to get up here and look around. But until then, you can throw a chatterbait around. You can come back here and fish shiners too. You know, I mean, the shiner bite's phenomenal all the time. But always, always include this area. Always check this area because once they move in, you can catch them really, really good in here. Uh, headwaters for me here lately. Um, we we have been doing uh, some artificial. Artificial bites a little bit slow, but you can't catch them. It's just a little bit harder. But uh, Fishing the ditches, uh, going east and west through here with a hard crankbait, a, a Rapala, you know, two to three foot diver, uh, or, uh, you know, crankbait and a jerkbait. Uh, today, had a trip today, shout out to uh, uh, Rusty and Matt, fellows from North Carolina. They beat them to pieces today with about 69. All right, shiners. Uh, it's as simple as coming here to the North Pit. We didn't leave the North Pit today. Uh, we were within a within a hundred yard range. Uh, there are uh, a couple of humps out here, and you can see them really good right now. There's a lot of stuff blown up on them right now, so you can really see them. Hydrilla humps, and um, we just fished around them, and we we wrecked them. Some sixes, fives, fours. We had a great time. So um, the the. The blockage is up towards this way, so you can either cut in and, and come into here, or you can go through the north cut and then cut across this way and hit it. So, um, yeah, we get around it. Yeah. You're up. All right. What do well, you got? Pretty much, I mean, uh, you know, I've been focusing, uh, you know, artificial mainly, more so mid lake, but like Steve said, I mean, within these ditches running east to west, 
you're gonna find wolf packs of fish um, throughout there. And just like same baits that Steve mentioned, um, you know, you could throw a chatterbait in there too, or if things are super slow, you know, slow roll a speed worm or, or drag that worm around too within those ditches. But my primary areas where I've been really finding and seeing these big schools of gizzard chat are these deeper pits. Um, so pump station two right here, the mouth right there, closest to the spillway. Um, this spillway, they have been running water pretty frequent. Um, they sometimes they'll be shutting it off like midday, uh, but it, it's been ever since the storm, they've been running water there. So those gizzard chat and those fish are pulling up over here on the points of this mouth. And then those gizzard shad will hold out here in that deeper water. And you'll see those fish it, right here is at the mouth. It's a little high spot and then a ditch runs through it. And you'll see the fish staged on the ledge on that drop off and they'll pull up and, and feed um, throughout the morning hours. But areas like this, I like to hit multiple times throughout the day because fish are there. You know, and they just, you, you may run there later in the day and then you pull up and that female just pulls up and she's ready to feed. Um, so these are productive areas right here by pump station two, right where that, that deep ditch there. And you could run that whole hard edge where the hyacinth mats are, the hydrilla, and then also the point of the mounts um, have been my high percentage areas. Also over here, see this deep ditch right here, or this deep pit. There's a hard hydrilla line all right here that's completely matted right now. Yes. Fresh hydrilla, green, um, super healthy stuff. We've been punching and catching fish there. Um, just that skunk ape, uh, black, blue tip, uh, punching with a one and a half ounce, um, getting in there really easy in the grass and catching fish along there. Um, also too, the two pits right here, mid lake, um, those fish will set up. You'll see them on the point and if they're not set up there, you will find them back here in the pockets. So it really just kind of depends on the day, depends on the conditions, um, but definitely high percentage area work and you'll see the bait and, and there's schools of fish over here. And then two, I'm running all the way down south to the square pond. Um, again, all these deep pits are holding shad and they're swimming around and these hard edges right here, the reed lines have hydrilla about you know, a boat length out from it and all productive. You'll see those fish on the, on the hard edge or they'll be within that grass. So all good stuff here. I mean, I've been catching a majority of my fish on the point here and then running this west bank over here um, with, again, with that glide bait, um, with a spinner bait, with a jerk bait, you know, all shad presentations and catching fish. Um, and if it's slow, you know, just slow it down. Um, just work a worm slow through that grass. Work and you'll get bit. I mean, or if it's slow, go get some shine. Go get some shine. <laughs> <laughs> That'll show you what's really there, that's for yes. sure, man. Yes. Uh, but yeah, man, that's that's been that's been my productive area. We actually did hit uh, this ditch here, this, um, I'm sorry, this pit here, uh, where the four palms are. Yeah. And um, we were slow working a worm through that hydrilla on the, on the edge, on the wind blowed side. And uh, we caught quite a few fish there, all around that two, three pound range, but still, um, you know, catching a bunch of fish. Nice, beautiful. And Steve, if you hold the camera, maybe Mike can talk about Garcia a little bit. Yeah. And, that, and that's the beauty of fishing down here. I mean, there's, we have so many lakes right here in our vicinity and, and uh, Garcia is a great fishery, right Mike? Yep, yep, it, it is. You get, you get some, some great, great numbers in, in here. Uh, like I said, the artificial bite was a little off today, but uh, in, as far as you know, getting around the water right now is up high, so you know you really don't have any navigation problems in, in, anywhere you want to go. Um, even if, if you run the rim uh, canal around uh, north and, and go this way, that you got to maneuver a little bit through through here and find some openings, but uh, you're able to get through. But for the most pit part, most of the good fishing is in this pit area. And again, you know, you, it, the, you've got the wall of hydrilla in, in milfoil and really uh, when they're we got the pumps running and, you know, they're, they're pumping water out of here and it kind of will move this way and, and go up towards uh, stick marsh. So it really tends to concentrate some fish over, over in here. Um, but uh, like I said, it uh, mainly the, the, these are the hot spots uh, around the pit and then this 
This flat out over here can be very productive as well because again, they're used to that uh, water pushing through in that uh, d direction there. But uh, other than that, not, not a great day today on um, the old Garcia, but uh, normally it's a, it's a really good productive fishery. I think the water was just up a little high today and the fish are a little spread out. Um, and uh but other than that uh all, all good check out garcia lake yeah no, no dirt road yeah no dirt road for those of you that, that, that don't like running that dirt road keep your trailer clean yeah your boat clean and your truck clean that's right and i'll say this about blue cypress which is another one of our lakes guys and, and it's not not too far from here as well um uh the spec bite has been really good lately and as a matter of fact, um, a couple guys were catching bass up on that rough point. And that rough point is as soon as you come out of the, uh, you know, where, where, where the bait shop is, which is the only boat ramp, and just kind of veer to the left. So it's on that west wall, um, just outside where the boat ramp is. And, and that rough point's been real productive, working your way down to the Blue Cypress Creek. Uh, and the spec bite's been incredible, the guys, the guys have been, uh, you guys been really catching a lot of spec over there and in Garcia um, in the pit. So there's been a lot of spec activity going on and it's kind of early for that, but uh, the guys have been catching them. So other than that, I mean, that covers all the lakes. Kingdonsville, uh, I know Michelle from Georgia, shout out to Michelle, she's awesome. Um, they went out with eight dozen shiners, her and her, her, her man. Um, she wasn't real impressed yet again. Um, so I don't think Kenansville is, is, is back yet um i think uh, one of the guys went out there two days after michelle did and uh he said he did decent mm -hmm. he said he did decent he wasn't extremely impressed but he did decent so i think the bite will get better um i guess we'll have to wait till the spawn yeah. probably yeah i agree um you know so um we can do the turn around you know it's everybody around. you know it's, i uh, hate for i hate to say keenan's well is great and then mm -hmm. somebody rides 12 12 miles yeah. down, that, down that crazy yeah. dirt road with that, that steep, ramp. Per, steep <laughs> boat ramp and then, uh, and then uh, you know, have a problem. So um, let's concentrate. I mean, Stick Marsh, Headwaters, Garcia, I know Mike didn't have a great day, but it's been great. Yep. Um, Blue Cypress, if you want to go enjoy Blue Cypress, go see Jim and Tammy over there. Blue Cypress Cabins, I mean, they're beautiful, beautiful places to stay right on the water. You leave your boat right in the water. Uh, they're fantastic people. Roy Bass is out there. He's got his... Uh, his pontoon boat, he does, um, just cruises around the lake. I mean, that's a big deal too. Um, so yeah. Anyway, give us a call guys. If you need us, uh, any information, we have places to stay. Um, you know, whatever you need, we're here. Other than that, I think, uh, I think we're good. All right, guys. We'll see you next week. Thank you all for watching, man. Like, and subscribe.